Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Madison or Dandelion. Today we are discussing rain magic. Everything having to do with rain magic. So at the end of this video, you will know everything you need to know about working with rain, working with water in your magic practice. And today is the perfect day to film this video because it is raining outside here in Southern California, which is rare. So I'm enjoying the rain and inspired to make this video for you all. Before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that join button to become a member of my channel to get access to exclusive members only perks. I upload videos to my channel twice a week, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos. And also take the time to read the Dropbox down below so you can follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and all my social medias. So let's talk about rain magic. So to start, let's talk a little bit about the correspondences of water. Water is seen as cool and passive. When you're working with any of the elements, they are always associated with a temperature, um, a emotion, a feeling, a sense. They're all connected to different things. So water is connected to that feeling of passiveness. It's a passive element. And water is also associated with being cool. It's kind of like if you've ever taken a color theory class or you're an artist, you'll know that different colors are associated with different temperatures. So certain colors are warm, certain, certain colors are cold. It's the same with the elements. Water is viewed as cool. So water is cool and passive. Water can also be seen as heavy. Each element is associated with a weight also. So water is very heavy. Each element will also have a direction associated with it. And when I say direction, I mean, of course, north, south, east, west, but I mean more so the direction with which the element moves, the way the element behaves. So water is associated with a downward motion, and it's usually moving downward or sideways if it's really, really windy. So knowing these correspondences of water, we can then move forward into working with water. So we know that if water is passive, if water is cool, if water moves downward, then we know how to work with water in our spell work, in our magic. So now let's talk a little bit about if you wanted to work with water, what would you do? The first thing is collecting rainwater. Rainwater is so, so powerful and can be used for so many things throughout your magic practice. Whenever it starts to rain, you can run outside with a bowl or a glass. I usually like to use a bowl because it's got more surface area, it's bigger, so the opening is bigger. It's not like putting a jar or a cup outside where the rain has to fall into a pretty small hole to get into the cup. If you leave a big wide bowl, then you'll collect more water quicker. And if you live in a place like me that doesn't get a lot of rain or rain is rare, then you want to collect as much rainwater as possible when you do have the opportunity. So put out a big bowl so you can catch as much rain as possible. And when I'm doing this, I always make sure to thank the skies for the rain. If you have a specific deity or energy being that you work with that you view as connected to the sky or as representing the sky, then you can thank that deity or you can just simply say thank you mother earth or thank you to the sky for giving me this rain. Thank you for giving the earth this rain. We needed it. Say it however you want. It can be as simple as just saying thank you. So I always like to give a quick thanks when I collect water. And something that I personally do because I am a Reiki practitioner is I will draw the Reiki symbols on the bottom of the bowl. And if you don't know, Reiki is a form of energy healing. So I draw those Reiki symbols on the bottom of the bowl to give the rainwater a little bit of Reiki so that the water is even more powerful than it would be if I just collected plain old rainwater, which is already really powerful. And on cue, Giles is here. Hello, sir. So when you're collecting rainwater, you can then use the water for a lot of different things. One of the things is cleansing. You can use this water to wipe down your altar when you clean it, to cleanse it for the new season. Um, you can use it to cleanse yourself. You can flick it over your energy field to cleanse yourself. You can also flick it over your altar to cleanse yourself if you don't have the ability to wipe your altar down or you just want to do a quick cleansing and you're not clearing everything off and wiping it down. I also use the rainwater I collect to cleanse my healing table. Before each client, I will wipe down the healing table with normal water and then I will flick the rainwater over the healing table to both cleanse it and bless it with the energy of that 
Rainwater. The properties that Rainwater has, it is a great tool for any spells that are, any spells or rituals that are about starting new, starting fresh, uh, growing new seeds, starting new jobs, starting a new chapter in your life, helping things to grow. So it's good to collect this water because it will aid you in anything in your practice that has to do with any of those things. In addition to collecting rainwater, you can also then charge it under the moon overnight. Once you collect it, just leave the bowl out overnight and then collect it in the morning. This is especially good if the rain happens on a full moon or on a new moon or on any other lunar event. So for example, today it is raining and today is the day of the full moon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the water overnight in the bowl that I collected it in and I'm going to grab it in the morning and it will have not only the properties of rainwater, but the properties of the full moon as well, which will charge it with such powerful energy. It will make the water not only have all the properties I listed before, being that it's rainwater, but it will also have the properties of the full moon. So it'll have the energy of that powerful, full completion that the moon is in right now in this phase. So this water will not only help with the things I listed before, but it will also help with reaching your goals, growing your seeds strong and tall and powerful. So any kind of new thing that you're starting, rainwater is so, so helpful, but charging it under the full moon is also helpful. If the moon that you're working with when it rains is the new moon or closer to the new moon, then that has its own set of properties. Um, that can be good for breaking old patterns, breaking old ties, starting a new phase, starting a new chapter. So no matter what phase the moon is in, it will aid your rainwater to charge it overnight under the moon. So let's talk a little bit about when it's raining, what are good things to do while it's raining. Whenever it's raining or there's a rainstorm, it is always a great idea to open the windows. Of course, as long as it's safe, if it's a crazy rainstorm, don't do this. Um, or if it's thunder and lightning, maybe don't do this. I'm crazy, so I still do it. But not saying that you should open your windows when it's crazy windy and rainy and storming. But if it's raining gently and you can safely open your windows, it's a good time to do that. Let that rain energy and that fresh, clean air sweep through your home, through the windows, and cleanse everything. Um, it's also a good time to do your own cleansings. So if it's raining outside, you can cleanse your altar, cleanse yourself, cleanse your space. Do this any way that you like to cleanse. And it's a good time to physically clean also. So that's an important aspect of cleansing. You can't have clean energy in your space if you have a dirty physical space. So it's a good time to clean your physical space and clean your energy. It's also a good time if it's raining outside to do a spell for clearing things out. Clearing out old stuff that you don't need anymore and bringing nutrients to those new seeds that you've planted. So if you're looking to do a spell for starting a new chapter in your life, a spell for reaching a goal that you recently set for yourself, during a rainstorm is a great time to do that spell. It's also a good time during a rainstorm to start working with a deity, an angel, an energy being that is associated with rain and water. So maybe you've been wanting to introduce yourself to Poseidon, or maybe you've been wanting to introduce yourself to one of the archangels that represents water. Uh, I believe the water angel is Gabriel. Uh, maybe you want to introduce yourself to one of these deities that's associated with the sky or associated with rain or associated with water. During a rainstorm is a great time to do that. You can introduce yourself to that deity and then put a bowl outside and say, name of the deity, name of the energy being, please fill this bowl with your rain so that I may use it for my practice and honor them for giving you that gift. And then you can even pour a little bit out onto the earth for them as offering. Water is also strongly associated with the altar tool of the chalice. So if you have a chalice, Here's mine. So if you have a chalice, you can pour the rainwater that you just collected into a little bit into your chalice and put it on your altar as offering to whatever deity it is that you're working with or energy being um, that is associated with that rain with that water that you received. You can give a little bit back to them as offering. Giving a little bit of your rainwater that you collected as offering is a great thing to do whether you're working with a water deity or not. So if that's something that resonates with you, that's a great offering to give. And if you are using your chalice to give it, at, to give this water as offering, you can leave it overnight or for the day, whatever you feel is correct. Just leave it for a little while. Um, and then obviously they won't 
this energy being won't be able to physically come here and drink the water you gave them. So you can either uh, dispose of it by drinking it yourself or you can pour it onto the earth to kind of return it to them. So a few more things you can do with rainwater once you've collected it. One is you can use it for scrying. So you can place it in a bowl or leave it in the bowl that you collected the water in and you can gaze into the water in the bowl and receive messages, perform divination that way. So if you've heard of scrying before, you can scry in water, fire, a mirror, you can scry a lot of different ways but one way is with water. So you can use that water you collected to scry. And if you wanna see a whole video about scrying and how to scry specifically with water, then comment that down below and I will know that you guys are interested in that and I'll make that video a priority. You can also use this rainwater to enhance your spells and your rituals. So you can use it during any kind of magical practice that you're doing where you want that rain energy to come in and enhance your spell. So this can be really good for, as we said before, any kind of cleansing work, um, any spell for prosperity, any spell for fertility, anything that you're trying to grow, um, anything that you're trying to achieve or reach, rainwater can help with that spell. Any good luck spells or wish spells can also be really great to use rainwater. Water has strong luck and wish properties. Pretty much everybody has turned their back to a body of water and tossed a coin in and made a wish. So all water has that kind of property to it. So any kind of spell where you're making a wish, spell where you're setting an intention and trying to grow a new seed or give yourself good luck and a fresh start, then rainwater will help with that spell. You can also take some of this rainwater and add it to your bath to have a kind of healing, cleansing, fresh start bath. So let's talk a little bit more in general about the things that water is associated with within magic. So one of the first things is birth. Water is all about movement. Water is always flowing, always moving, it seeps into things and through cracks. Um, so water can help to have an easy birth. Uh, and this can be a physical birth if you're carrying a child, or it can be the birth of an idea, the birth of a new you, um, moving out of one chapter into the next chapter. So think of birth not only as a physical baby coming out of their mother, um, but think of birth also as a concept within your life. What are you giving birth to? Another thing that is strongly associated with water is astral travel and astral projection. And again, if you wanna see a video about astral projection, please comment that down below so I know you guys are interested and I'll prioritize that video. But astral projection is very strongly associated with water. Again, we're thinking of water as this being that cannot really be contained. Of course, it can be put in a container, but it seeps, it flows, it moves, um, it's easily spilled. It will just kind of into everything. So it can't really be contained in a lot of ways. And astral travel is very strongly like that. It's where you are sending your astral body out of your physical body. So you're traveling with your astral body, your physical body is staying still. So you can in some ways think of your astral body as water and it flows out of you and then flows around and then you call it back. So you can use water to help your astral practice. Um, maybe when it's raining outside, it can be a good time for you to try astral projection for the first time. Water is also very strongly associated with psychic abilities, clairvoyance, all the clairs, claircognizance, um, clairaudience, every single clair. So all your psychic abilities are associated with water. Um, if you know anything about the zodiac, you'll know that the three zodiac signs associated with water are very strong psychic beings. So anybody who has a star sign that's one of those three water zodiac signs is going to have strong psychic abilities. So if you're working on your psychic abilities, water can help you with that. Dreams are also associated with water. So any kind of dream work is associated with water, uh, dream interpretation, lucid dreaming. Also connected to when we talked about water being associated with psychic abilities, water is also associated with the future. If you think about this, this makes sense because water 
falls down from the sky, waters the plants, and allows things to grow. So water greatly impacts our future. Even with our bodies, if we don't drink water, there are going to be future ramifications. So water is very strongly associated with the future. Water is also strongly associated with nurturing. Like we just said, every living thing needs water to survive. So water is very strong nurturing energy. Water is also associated with glamour magic. Um, kind of like looking at the surface of a body of water, you can't quite tell what's underneath. And sometimes you can get that mirage effect um, where there is no water, but it looks like there's water. Um, so water is a bit of a trickster. So that's where its association with glamour magic comes in. And connected to that is water is associated with illusion and creation. So again, water allows things to grow. Water allows things to turn from a seed into a huge, huge tree. Water is life-giving. And water, again, there can be a mirage where you think there's water. You're looking at the surface of the ocean, of a lake, of a pond, of a river. You can't quite tell what's underneath. So water is all about illusion and creation. Water is also strongly associated with love. So if you're doing a love spell, if you're doing um, a self-love spell, a love for the world, a general love for all spell, um, calling in love for yourself, whether it be platonic or romantic love, Water can help those spells. Water is also associated with the unconscious mind. So water can be a great vehicle for shadow work. If it's raining outside, you can do some shadow work. And again, connected to dreams. So in dreams, we get a glimpse of our unconscious mind. And that's where that water element comes in, where we're seeing below the surface and we're seeing through the illusion and into our mind's deepest shadow and what our mind hides even from us. So that is all I have to share with you guys today about water and rain magic. I really enjoyed making this kind of elemental magic video. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this, give it a like and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my future videos. Do let me know in the comments if you're interested in more videos about working with the elements. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon. Blessed be.